Hey, Washington Indivisibles, it's Ezra. Gosh, I wish I could be there in person right now. One of the highlights of my year last year was being able to go out to Washington, knock on some doors, send some postcards, and, and help be part of the effort that y'all have been building for so long to take Washington eighth, to take Washington third. And, you know, thinking back to early last year when all of the conventional political wisdom was that this red wave was coming, that MAGA was ascendant, that they were going to take over and do all this damage, that they were unified. And flash forward, y'all ignored that. Y'all focused on what you could actually do week in, week out, month in, month out to do the work to fight back against these anti-democratic extremists, to fight back against MAGA extremism and hold the line. And you did your part. You did your part. And yes, look, these wackadoodles, they did take a slim majority in the House. But as of the recording of this video, we do not have a Speaker of the House. And we don't have a Speaker of the House because they are so incompetent, because they are so disorganized, and because their margins are so small, because we took Washington's eighth, because we took Washington's third. You have to go back to before the Civil War to find a historical example of a majority party failing to elect a speaker on nine ballots. That's where we are right now. It's going to 10, it's going to 11. We'll see whether they get a speaker by the time you watch this video. Now that's scary. You don't wanna be looking to before the Civil War for any kind of historical precedent, but God, I'm just full of hope right now. I'm full of hope because they said the Affordable Care Act was dead in 2017. We organized and stopped it. They said there was no way we could take the House in 2018 because of Trump and gerrymandering and voter suppression. We did it. We built the largest midterm margins in the history of the republic. They said we might not be able to hold this guy accountable and impeach him. We did it in 2019. They said we couldn't make him a first one-term president in a generation. We did it in 2020. They said we couldn't win two impossible runoffs in Georgia. We did that in 2021, and in 2022, we staved off this inevitable red wave that was supposedly coming. So now, as I sit here outside our house, because Zeke is inside making a lot of noise, and I'm gonna get back to him in a second, I'm looking to the future right now, and I see a disorganized, anti-democratic, weak majority in the House, and I see energized, pro-democracy supporters all across the country, and especially in Washington. And we have an easy goal. All we have to do is take back the House, hold the Senate, hold the presidency, and then we'll be looking in 2025 at an opportunity to codify Roe, pass democracy reform, and, and consign these extremist bigots who are attacking our democracy and our rights and our freedoms to the dustbins of history. That's the history we're making together right now, and every one of you has been contributing to this. So we need you in this fight. We need you to persisting in this effort. We're going to win. We're going to do it together the way we've been doing it for the past six years. I'll see you out there again.